everyone, so forgive me for my absence lately, um, I usually upload a lot of videos daily, but, um, I've been really busy working on fan films too, actually, so that's why I'm twice as late, um, so I thought I would, uh, work on a little project with, which would be comparing the two Halloween H2O and then the 2018 Halloween. So the first thing I'm going to start off with comparing is directors, um, H2O was directed by Steve Miner, who also, he has a, um, resume for horror already, which was, for a few, would be Lake Placid, um, Warlock, um, Friday the 13th Part 2, which is actually one of my personal favorites, um, and, and that aspect, he has more of a feel for the horror genre. Unlike uh, the other director in Halloween 2018, David Gordon Green does, because he mostly did, did comedy. But we'll get back to that later. So the cast of H2O is Jane Lee Curtis, uh, Josh Hartnett, LL Cool J, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And um, so the cast overall is really, really good. Even LL Cool J does pretty good, considering his part is more like the comical part of the movie, which I didn't need it, honestly, which I could have totally done without him in the movie, but it wasn't bad. Um, and then Joss Hartnett, it's his first film, and he does really good in the movie for it being a, a supporting uh, actor's role, really. Um, but then Michelle Williams, she was in a lot of uh, different diversity films, um, and she's extremely talented as well, as well as David Curtis, who... Um, as you all know what she's from, so I'm not even going to say it, so you don't need an introduction. I don't t particularly care for um, things being milked to death, like franchises um, and horror very rarely. In any movie, I like it to carry out past the first film. Um, I mean, if it does, it's very rare that it's even better. Um, so, in that regard, normally I wouldn't like a movie this far along in the franchise, but... I think it's better than the later installments, honestly, than 4, 3, and 5, and 6, so, um, everyone says they don't mention the previous films, they do, it's just really brief, and it doesn't really, uh, affect this story whatsoever, really, um, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis explaining to her boyfriend, Will, about, um, her past and how she faked her death, basically. Um, so therefore, she had to give up Jamie and everything, but we're not going to get into that. Um, so, with, um, the story, it's quite different than, well, in some aspects it's different than Halloween 2018 with, um, Jamie Lee Curtis's, Jamie Lee Curtis's character, Laura Strode, moving to um, California um, to hopefully um, not be near her brother that she knows is still alive, um, and this is where it's different with you know with the. Um, um, the background or the, well, I guess the set or the atmosphere, I guess, is really different than, you know, you would see in Haddonfield, but, I mean, it makes sense, and plus, it's something different, um, but, um, you don't get very many Halloween tones or feeling in this movie as much. But I think that the story alone and the ending and the battle between Michael and Lori, even though it, um, I could watch Halloween 1978 and the, and the sequel, the original sequel, and then H2O, and that's really it for the series for me, honestly. Um, and that's how it's been forever, which I'll still watch 4 and 5 and 6 in October just for fun. 
Um, because I still watch them. Um, I just don't love them. But, um, so, Michael's come back to kill, to finish off Lori and his, her son. Um, and all the people that's in the way, unfortunately, meet their demise by Michael Myers. Um, and that's one of the other comparisons I'm going to make is the actors that play Michael Myers. Chris Durand plays um, Michael Myers in this film. Um, he's not that bad. I don't hate him um, as much as some of the others. Like, for example, Don Shanks from Halloween 5. Um, yeah. So... And then in the 2018, we got James Stewart Courtney, which honestly is a hell of a lot better um, than Chris Rand, but still. Um, now with the characters, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, this character, Lois Road, they're pretty similar still. Like, they both deal with uh, trauma, uh, PTSD. Um, it's just... This one, the 2018 version explains it more with, you know, it, um, with her and the play team wanting to commit suicide, but then her also dealing with, um, fear her whole life and wanting to, uh, seclude herself from the world and, uh, basically teaching her daughter to fight because she's afraid that she's going to be in danger as well, which I don't think is a bad thing, honestly. Um... But, and this one, she's an alcoholic still, much like the 2018 version. She still um, has uh, trouble sleeping. She still has nightmares. Um, she passes her trauma onto her son, which is why they're not close, really. Um, because her uh, struggle with Michael Myers also became a struggle for Josh Hartnett's character. Um... John, and it's really well played out with the scenes between the two, um, and then in the 2018 version, uh, they have, like, no, um, connection whatsoever, really, her, Jamie Lee Curtis's, well, uh, Lois Rhodes' daughter, uh, Judy Greer, um, that character plays Karen, um, and even her granddaughter, uh, because um, she gets taken away from her for being an unfit mother. Um, which is really sad, and it's something different too as well. Um, um, so the performances by Jenny Curtis given in both films are still really incredible, I think. Um, she does re really good in H2O. Um, she's that nervous wreck, but she's still like strong willed and not easily uh, taken over. You know, she's still willing to fight and kick ass. And, um, and that's my point with H2O. There's so many scenes that's iconic that, like, when she, you know, tells uh, Molly. And, uh, John's character, um, to, to go and drive off and she locks the door and hits it with a rock. <laughs> then she kicks open this axe, or the hatchet case, and she goes after Michael, feeling his name with the score kicking in. Um, it's really great. It's one of my favorite scenes in the movie and I get so pumped up every time I see it. Um, and that's another, uh, comparison is the score, um... And this movie, it's more instrumental, um, and it's not nowhere near as good as, of course, Halloween 2018. Music in H2O is, isn't bad. I do, I do still enjoy it. Um, I just can't hold a candle to, you know, the original master of horror. And does he need an introduction? Probably not, but... John Carpenter. So, the climax at the ending of H2O is really well done. Um, the fighting, I love it, like the choreography. I mean, it's not like 
ninja style or nothing, you know, but, um, it's just really intense, you know, seeing her finally fight back and, you know, there's so many scenes that are so memorable still, like with the scene where she went to the cafeteria and she's hiding under the table and St Michael's standing over the cafeteria table and she tries to escape and then when she gets all the knives out of the kitchen at her school that she's become a teacher at, um, she throws them and um, it's just so many great scenes and especially the ending. I cannot praise the ending enough where uh, she knows she's not dead so she chops off his head. Um, yeah, there it is. Um, and it's just so great, like, especially then the original score kicks in, then you hear Lori's breathing over top of the cops coming down to, uh, find Lori. It's just really great, then it cuts off to credits. Um, it's just great. And then we get the 2018 Halloween, uh, which is still a really... Uh, well done ending um, for the story um, which as you know it's a direct sequel to the 1978 Halloween They're, they are in fact ignoring all the previous films for real this time and and so the cast in this film is Will Patton uh, Judy Greer and took away from the movie itself and it took up too much time for them to make their own story really which it was its own story, but still, it just got, it was, um, kind of distracting. Um, a few is okay, but not throughout the whole film. Um, so, Jimmy Curtis is once again traumatized still, um, and it's, it's power, pretty powerful on both aspects of each film, like, they're different to some degree, but they're both really well done, and Jamie Curtis, I do think she does a much better job in this than she did in the other one, which she did great in both, but I think she, um, really goes for it in this film, um, and you can see her, uh, um, her emotions through her eyes, and her, you know, her, just the way she talks and gasps, and, um, and it's really tragic, honestly. Like, it's really sad. Um, more so in this film. Uh, because of her performance and the fact that she's don't really have much of a family anymore. Um, so that part I really like. And then, I don't like how a lot of the scenes with Michael are shot in the daytime at all. I think it takes from the mystique of Michael. Um, but... Um, so the first half, um, before Michael escapes is better, honestly, than the later half, uh, the third act, um, even though I do like it, but just, it's, there's so much going on, like, it doesn't have time, like, there's, the scenes are pretty brief, honestly, and it's like, hmm, hmm, hmm. like, if you blink, you'll miss something, pretty much. That seems like, um, but, so another comparison I'm going to make is the masks, um, which there's several on H2O, as you know, including the CGI mask, I know everyone hates it for that uh, reason, but it's like two seconds in the film, so it's not that big of a deal when it, when Halloween 4 has a damn pink mask, chamber mask with blonde hair, so whatever. Um, so... Um, this mask is, well not that mask, that's the, uh, H6, the Chris Myers mask, but it's supposed to be great too. Um, so the mask in Halloween 2018 is really well done, it's, you know, uh, wrinkled, which is kind of poetic because, like, how Michael is now, they're both old as fuck. Um, and so is the mask. Um, and it's aged. Um, and it looks really good in the dark. But in the light, it doesn't look so uh, threatening, honestly. Which that's another thing with another problem I had is that so much is in the dark and the light. And in both films, the death are the deaths are also pretty 
good, which I sure didn't have that many. Um, which I think that's also because they spend more time building up this spins than the Hell in 2018 does. Um, but that's just me, so you can agree to disagree if you want. Comment that, that below too if you want to. So, I like how they did actually um, put some a lot of Halloween elements into it with the pumpkins and the the orange lights, trick or treat lights, and trick or treaters walking around actually, and just being back in Haddonfield is a nice feeling. Which I should have shown more of it. It was kind of like I said, it was brief and pretty random in a way. Like it wasn't. Uh, I don't know if it's either the editing or it's the the way it was shot. Um, it just seemed really. Uh, you don't get enough time to see the Halloween stuff, I guess, for me. Um, but that part is better than H2O, I think. Um, so, I'll still be watching H2O more than 2018 Halloween, I'm sure. Um, but I'm glad we have another one to watch every year now, um, despite some of the flaws and the, the good and the bad, but... They both have their flaws and uh, some things that work and some things that don't in both films. Um, so, I'm not going to say one's better than the other. Um, like I said, there's aspects in both films that um, tip the scale and some that, you know, get the bottom half. Um, so, yeah. That's pretty much my uh, comparison review between the two, Halloween H2O and 2018 Halloween. Um, let me know what you think. I'd like to know your thoughts on it. And uh, comment below. Thank you.